I have been so excited for episode two of Racing Connoisseurs, and we are at Del Mar Hotspot Searsucker by Chef Brian Malarkey. I don't want to waste any time. Let's go in and meet our guest. For our second edition of Racing Connoisseurs, we're going to join prominent Southern California trainer, Peter Miller. Pete, I've got a yeah. Peter Rabbit for you. Cheers. Cheers to you. So right now we're outdoor on the patio at Searsucker. Have you been here before? I have. I mean, the food is delicious. That drink, the Peter Rabbit, was absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So this Pleasure. is going to be fun. We really want to give our viewers a little bit of an insight to you as a trainer. We talk to you all day, every day about your horses, but how did you get into horse racing? Well, my, my father brought me to the track when I was eight, and uh, it was uh, instant love. Mm -hmm. And then uh, from there, I've been, I went to jockey school at 10, wanted to be a jockey. And um, I guess my, my love for food over, overwhelmed my love of riding horses. And so I, uh, being a trainer was the next best thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, here I am. So how long have you been training? I got my license when I was 21, so uh, almost 30 years. Were you always in Southern California? I was always in Southern California. I took a little break, oh, about five to eight years from training. I was still galloping horses, mm -hmm. but I was, uh, you know, looking into other ventures and other avenues. And uh, But the horses, I always galloped horses, even mm -hmm. when I was doing other things. So I've pretty much been uh, doing horses since I was 18. We all know how successful you are now, but can you tell us how hard it is to really break in as a trainer? It's so difficult. It is so difficult. And I really feel for young trainers now trying mm -hmm. to get in because the game is, is tougher now than ever. And, um, you know, it was really difficult to get in. I was fortunate to have family uh, that provided me a few horses to train and um, springboarded me into outside clients. And, uh, you know, uh, I met Gary Barber. Mm -hmm. Um, who was uh, instrumental mm -hmm. in my um, in my rise, and uh, uh, just been very fortunate to meet some very good people and uh, do well for them. What do you think is the hardest part, though, uh, of being a trainer? Is it the mornings, the afternoons, getting the clients? Uh, getting the clients and uh, the people mm -hmm. are more difficult for me. Mm -hmm. I think everyone has their skill set. Okay. I. You know, the horses always came easy. Dealing mm -hmm. with horses is fun and natural for me. The owners and the health and the clientele, I'm not very good at self-promotion. Mm -hmm. I'm not good at hustling, so to speak, new clients. Most all of my business has been word of mouth mm -hmm. and referrals. So um, that's the hard part for me is more the people. The horses are easy, but... Um, you know, all in all, it's 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 a tough game. I think people would be surprised hearing that from you because you seem so personable. You're very likable on camera. You tell things how they are. So I think people would be surprised hearing you say that. Well, yeah, it's one thing to be that way or <laughs> to have your personality however it is. But to actually go and ask someone for their business mm -hmm. doesn't come natural to yeah. me. It's almost like asking a girl out, you know. <laughs> it's like you're... It's that fear of rejection mm -hmm. or something. So I, I don't know that I've ever really asked a client for business. Like I said, I'm, you know, very fortunate that, mm -hmm. you know, people have referred me and word of mouth and things of that nature has built my business because otherwise I, I probably have two horses. Is there a moment over however many years you have been training that really stands out to you as the moment that you feel you made it? Well, um... Yeah, probably uh, about 10 years ago, uh, the first horse I ran for Gary Barber was a horse named Fast Parade. Mm -hmm. And I bought him privately, and the first time I ran him, he was in the green flash. Mm -hmm. And uh, he won easy and broke the track record. <laughs> and still has the track record, five-eighths on the grass. And so that was kind of the moment where I thought, well, you know, I can, I can do this. Mm -hmm. What has been your biggest win, in your opinion? You know, the grade ones are always big, and so, um, you know, probably it, I would say maybe the cash call mm -hmm. maturity with Common to the Top was was a big one. Um, 
Finnegan's Wake winning the Woodford last year on the Derby undercard was big. But any of the grade ones are extra special. You have a wide range of horses. It doesn't seem like you have one specialty, which is great because you could do it all. For our viewers, if they're handicapping, what is something that is signature Peter Miller that they should say, yes, this is something that he does and we know this horse is ready? Um, I'd say probably young horses mm -hmm. and, um, I, you know, um, I like to think that, you know, my comebackers off layoffs are mm -hmm. ready. So I'd say those are probably my, maybe two of my stronger, um, stronger points. So for a first time starter, what kind of works are signature Peter Miller? Do you work them really fast? Do you have a consistent kind of drills? Y you know, the good ones will work fast mm -hmm. for me. Um, I prefer medium works. I like. I don't like to press them too hard. I don't like them to go too slow. Mm -hmm. I kind of try to be in that, you know, Bobby Frankel, Whittingham um, type of work pattern of a solid, you know, five, six, or seven days, and um, you know, maybe a gate work or two. But um, that that's pretty much my my telltale is is if they're working steadily and look like they have a pretty solid uh, work pattern, then they're probably ready. Well, you're firing on all cylinders here at Del Mar. You had a horse that broke the track record that stood for over 50 years in chasing and he says, can you tell us about this freaky horse? Yeah, that was incredible. That was um, really exciting. Um, we bought him at Barrett's mm -hmm. here in March and um, you know, the horse always showed a lot of ability and uh, he ran once, had a little bit of trouble, thought that maybe he was best. He was inside and a little intimidated, but, um, you know, uh, you never expect them to win like that mm -hmm. and break a track record. That's just, you know, uh, gravy. Mm -hmm. But um, the horse has always shown that he's very special, and uh, we recently sold uh, the majority interest mm -hmm. in the horse um, to uh, Adam Wachtel and Earl Mack. Adam's been a longtime client of mine, and Earl's a new client of mine, mm -hmm. and hopefully we can, um, you know, win, win a grade one or two with them. Delmar Futurity next? Yeah, <laughs> knock on wood, knock on wood, yeah. Can you tell us about when a horse is privately purchased like that? As a trainer, does it get a little nerve-wracking that then the horse is going to leave your barn? It can. It definitely can. You know, uh, we had overtures from the East Coast trying to purchase him, and I... I want to always, um, I try and do what's best for my client, mm -hmm. you know, because if I can keep them happy and flush, then they're going to continue to buy horses. Mm -hmm. So I try and look after their best interest first and then mine second. And if the horse had been sold to the East Coast, you know, I would have been sad, um, but, but so be it. But uh, it's always much better when you can, you know, sell it in-house, keep the horse, mm -hmm and uh, do it that way um, you know, makes it obviously um, you know, much better. Any horses you were really looking forward to racing down here at Del Mar? Yeah, there, there definitely are. I've got uh, um, a half-brother to Calculator mm -hmm. uh, named Earnhardt, who worked really well this morning, uh, 59 and one out of the gate. And he, he seems like he could be a top horse. We're not sure whether he's gonna be a grass horse mm -hmm. or a dirt horse. But uh, he's exciting, and uh, then we've got a real nice macho Uno Colt uh, named uh, Bobby Abu Dhabi. Yeah. <laughs> I like that name. I like the name. It's a good <laughs> name, Bobby Abu Dhabi. And uh, Bobby, Bobby looks like he could be a top prospect. So, you know, we've got we've got some nice horses still uh, yet to run here, mm -hmm. and uh, Del Mar is always just an exciting time of year. I can see the smile when you're talking about these horses. Are the two-year-olds the most fun for you to work with? No doubt, definitely. I, I love the young horses. Mm -hmm. I, I just like seeing their development and seeing how they change mentally, physically, mm -hmm. and um, that's definitely the. Um, my most fun and my most gratifying. I'm gonna make you put your handicapping hat on now. XOXO and the Daisy Cutter on the also eligible. If she gets in, what are your expectations for her? I think she has a big chance if she gets in. I don't know that we will, but mm -hmm. uh, she she had a lot of trouble in her comeback race. Uh, she kind of false broke a couple times and then broke poorly and then kind of rushed up and flattened out a little bit. So I think uh, with that race under her belt, if she can get in the race, I think she's got a big chance to win. Every trainer has their moment that is the favorite, whether it be the mornings or in the afternoon or dealing with a client. For you personally, what is your favorite part of being a trainer? 
the mornings. Mm -hmm. I enjoy the horses and um, the quiet of the morning and, and just, just dealing with the horses is mm -hmm. more fun. Although winning races is probably the most fun. <laughs> The most fun. We have seen you get very excited after you won a race. I get excited. I'm an excitable guy, <laughs> and I do get excited. What do they say about the football players? Uh, act like you've been to the end zone before. Yes. Well, when I win a race, it's like I've never won one before. But uh, it's it's a, it's such a rush for me, and it's such a thrill, mm -hmm. and I I, uh, I have a hard time hiding it. You're very hands-on, though, in the mornings. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, I, I really enjoy that aspect of training horses, you know, uh, if, if I need to gallop one mm -hmm. to feel it, or uh, I like to touch every horse's legs every day, um, you know, pet on them, and just get connected to them, because I think if you get connected to them, you have um, a better sensitivity for what they might need to, to perform at the best. And each horse is different. Each horse has a personality, which I don't think we get to see every day on television or while watching them at the track. Exactly, and that's the key, is knowing their personality, knowing their legs, looking at them, touching them every day, you can sense when something's amiss, when something's wrong, or this horse is too laid back, or this horse is too nervous and excitable, so we need to you know, get this one a little more uh, uh, aggressive or a little more competitive, mm -hmm. and then this one, we gotta settle this one down. He's just not gonna be able to run mm -hmm. as nervous and silly as she's acting. So, you know, that's that's the fun part of, of trying to figure out how and what to do with each horse to get them to perform at their maximum. So you have a blueprint for a horse. As a standard horse, we have a two-year-old, and this is how we would train a two-year-old. But as the days go by, you get to know them better and better. And does that blueprint change? It absolutely does. It changes due to many factors, mm -hmm. but um, one being, you know, soundness. Mm -hmm. um, the other one being, you know, how much work they can handle. Some horses, you work them too much and then they get off their feet. Some horses need more work. Uh, weight, mm -hmm. you know, um, just overall health and stress. So, yeah, you have your basic blueprint, mm -hmm. but it, 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 it gets tweaked as the horse's uh, training progresses. You've had some great horses. What do you think is the most important attribute that a great horse has? Heart. Heart and desire. If, if, if you could um, know which horses had heart at the yearling sales mm -hmm. or the two-year-old sales, you would be far better off than buying the more talented one mm -hmm. or the prettier one. Uh, you know, really there's no substitute for, um, you know, the courage and the will to win. Growing up, did you have a favorite horse, either watching him run or, or one that you would train? I had a lot of favorite horses uh, growing up. Um, Affirmed mm -hmm. was, was one of my favorites. Uh, Affirmed and Spectacular Bid were the, my two favorites growing up. What about them? Tremendous horses. Affirmed had a, a tremendous heart mm -hmm. and courage. So that's what I loved about him. He just did not want to lose. And uh, Spectacular Bid was the most talented horse I've ever seen in person. Mm -hmm. I mean, I watched him win the Santa Anita Handicap with some ungodly amount of weight on his <laughs> back with Bill Shoemaker, track record time, and basically just drug Bill around there. And I was like, this is, I've never seen mm -hmm. this. And and he was the most talented horse I've ever seen. Well, we get to witness some spectacular things on the racetrack, especially this year, it seems like. We've been really blessed, especially in Southern California. Yes, absolutely. I mean, American Pharaoh, mm -hmm. uh, Beholder, mm -hmm. uh, just to name two. <laughs> and and there have been a lot more. So, no, we're very lucky to, to be on you know, the Southern California circuit mm -hmm. and to see, you know, the Zenyatas and uh, the likes. Mm -hmm. It's it's, uh, it's really an amazing thing that, um, that a lot of uh, horsemen don't get the opportunity to, to witness. One race that you would love to win? Well, of course, the Kentucky Derby. Right. I wasn't going to say maybe yes. aside from the Kentucky yeah. Derby. <laughs> yeah, because actually that's, that's actually probably not, you know, uh, 
you know, there are other races that, that really appeal to me. Um, the Metropolitan Mile mm -hmm. is one that I'd really love to win. Uh, the King's Bishop. You know, don't ask me why, but... Uh, Historical races. Yes, exactly. You know, of course, the Pacific Classic would be, would be great, mm -hmm. too. So, you know, um, any grade one is great to win. And you mentioned how excited you get when you win a race. Well, how about when you won the training title here at Del Mar? I don't think I've ever seen you as excited as that. That was really, that was probably the highlight of my career, to win that title here. You know, I live 10 minutes from Del Mar. Mm -hmm. uh, my friends and family are, are down here. So to win, to win at Del Mar is always a little more special mm -hmm. to me and a little more exciting um, than, than winning up in L.A. Hey, you have the most beautiful family. Will we see your two boys in horse racing? Well, you'll definitely see him out there. Um, you know, someone asked if, if he was going to be a trainer, and I said, <laughs> no, he's going to be an owner. Smart. So, yeah, so uh, um, we'll see. Whatever they want to do, you know, if, if horse racing is in their blood like it was in my blood, mm -hmm. then, then I'm all for it, you know, as long as they're passionate about whatever they do. Big race on Saturday, the La Jolla Handicap. Monster B? Is that how we're saying it? B, I, yeah, Bo, B, Bay? Uh, I don't know. It's, it's B-E-A, <laughs> but I, I call him Monster B. And um, he's, he's uh, I've only had him for less than a month, but he's mm -hmm. he's training really well. And uh, Gary Stevens loves the horse, and, and I do too. So um, hopefully he can duplicate his effort in the ocean mm -hmm. side, and that'll set us up really nicely for the uh, Del Mar Derby. He surprised betters that day. Did he surprise you? He, he did. He did. Because, you know, I'd only had him a short time. Uh, Mark Cassie, you know, told me the horse was training unbelievably. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when a guy like Mark tells you that, you believe it. <laughs> so, you know, but on numbers and figures and on his form, I thought he looked a little overmatched. Mm -hmm. But um, he really performed uh, uh, superbly and uh, came out of the race very well. So, you know, I think we have a, a big look again if you can duplicate that effort um, off of three weeks rest. Gary Stevens worked him on the turf. Is, is, is this something you typically do with stakes horses, work them on the turf? And what do they get out of that? You know, it depends on the horse. It depends on um, what I think they need. You know, if they have certain physical um, deficiencies or ailments, you know, if they have bad feet, mm -hmm. I might like to work them on the, on the grass. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe if they're a little funky behind, maybe work them on the grass. So, you know, it just kind of depends on an individual case-by-case -case basis. But, you know, uh, Bobby Frankel won more grass races than anyone, and he didn't work them on the grass. So, you know, I don't, I don't know that there's, um, there's anything other than you just kind of get a feel. Mm -hmm. As you train horses, you go with your gut, and you go with what, you're, what you feel. And... Um, you know, I've learned to trust it, mm -hmm. and um, and so that's what I was feeling with this horse was to breeze him twice mm -hmm. on the grass, and he's breezed really well on it, and hopefully, um, hopefully he performs well Saturday. And you mentioned the Del Mar Derby. What do you think of this succession of turf races, the turf series that we have here at Del Mar? It's great. I mean, it's a really great series, and um, you know, I wish there was a little bit more time, but there's just not a lot of time in the meet right so it's difficult to cram three races in a seven week meet mm -hmm. so I wish there was a month between every race but um, you know uh, it, it is what it is and, and uh, the time is you know uh, three weeks so we're gonna come back in three weeks and hopefully he can he can uh, duplicate uh, the ocean side well best of luck to you and a lot of exciting prospects can't wait to see Chasing Aces, the track record holder here at Del Mar. Come back in the Del Mar Futurity. And, of Me course, too. best of luck this Saturday. Pete, thank you so much for joining Cheers. us here at Searsucker. We're going to enjoy our Peter Rabbit with a nice little carrot on top. This was another edition of Racing Connoisseurs right here at Searsucker.